Hey y'all, thank you so much for watching Miss Julie TV where we talk about everything and what I mean everything I mean. So if you haven't watched the very first episode, I'm gonna need for you to go pause, pause this video, go and click on the link in the description. Y'all, so in the last episode, I um, left off where Gabe and I met. And Gabe is, if you are new to my channel, Gabe is my husband. And like, we go way back. He's my first love, my first everything. Uh, my very, well, my second story time was about me losing my virginity. So if you want to go back to like my older videos, um, that's the story time of like losing my virginity and how I met him and stuff like that. So that kind of gets goes into te and that kind of goes into detail as far as that. In this episode, I'm not gonna go into detail because I've already discussed it or already talked about it. So I'm just gonna briefly go over what happened. I used to always go hang out outside with my uh, friends, Madison, as I spoke about in my last story time. We would always go out and hang around and um, you know just just be chilling, right? So me and Gabe ended up meeting and we we hit it off like we were. We were we were serious. I mean, I loved him, and I mean, he loved me, and well, at least I thought he did or felt like he did. I mean, he was only 16 at the time, and I was 13. I hated being at home at this point. At this at this time in my life, I didn't like being at home, and I didn't like being at home because I just hated the fact of me watching my mom treat this basically stranger better than she did me there would be times i would go days without coming home because i would be at madison's house um because we, we live in the same apartment complex as well and so we rode the same bus we were in the same grade and everything so you know our schedules was pretty much the same so i would like spend days and days even on school nights at her house and we would get up for school together ride a bus together come home go back to her house together like i was always there at this point me and gabe had been together for a little for a couple months or so um and school started back and so this is whenever i was entering eighth grade and um, I started skipping school to be with Gabe because I don't know, I just felt like I, I didn't have enough time with him. And you know, I, I I don't know, I was just really, I was like, at this point in my life, I was like, fuck school, like I just wanna be with him. He was honestly, outside of my best friend, he was the only person who like really made me feel like I was given a fuck about. I got caught skipping school and um, my mom found out. And so after she found out, my mama didn't really want to talk to me for some reason. It's like, she didn't want to talk to me. She didn't want to have the conversation. Like, I knew what happened. And the reason why I knew what happened is because for whatever reason, Rough Rider, she called me in her room. And so she decided she wanted to have a conversation with me. And I'm like, what's going on? And long story short, you know how you get in trouble and your parents like talk to you or try to have a talk and try to help you understand why you in trouble and this and that. Like she was doing all of that. Mind you, my mom was in her, in her room. Like she could have talked to me, but for whatever reason, she had her friend talk to me. Me and Rough Rider was talking. It was going in one ear and out the other because it's like, I can't take no advice from you. I feel like, honestly, I feel like we are in competition. And I, I really, really felt like that. I felt like we were in competition. I felt like I was trying to, you know, fight for my mom's attention because she always had to be there. Like she was always there, always in the mix of everything, always included in everything. It was just like, after Rough Rider and I finished talking or whatever, and I don't even remember how this conversation went. I, I, I think she ended up telling me about a story of her being young or whatever. I don't know, some bullshit. And so after we finished talking, she made me go and talk to my mama and basically apologize and admit to her what I was really doing and this and that. So I did. I did whatever and my mama um, forbid me from talking to Gabe. She took my phone. I couldn't go outside anymore. I couldn't go to Madison's house anymore. I couldn't do anything. I used to walk to the um, to the front of the apartment to catch the bus. I could no longer walk to the front of the apartment anymore because obviously my mama didn't trust me, you know, because I had been skipping school previously. So Hurricane Ike comes, y'all. And at this point, um, the electricity is off everywhere we have to stay in the um a hotel even even the hotel's electricity eventually went off but um hurricane i came and we evacuated we evacuated to a hotel and um this was right after i was forbid from talking to gabe and for whatever reason rough rider was looking through my phone me and gabe used to talk a little dirty every now and then well not really really dirty dirty but like he'll i don't even want to say what he would say but like he 
and just know that it wasn't really appropriate. That night ended with Rough Rider giving my mama like one of these books because she was in school for her funeral directing or whatever. And she had this book for whatever reason of, um, it was just like a book full of pictures of STDs, like blue waffles, herpes, like literally pictures of it. And whenever I said pictures of it, I mean like literally pictures of how your vagina would look or how your penis would look if you was to have this or that STD. Like, I don't know where the fuck she got this book from. Bitch, I don't care. But it was really fucking weird. And her, my mama uh, showing me this and saying, oh, you could catch an STD and you out here having sex and you don't know what you're getting yourself into. You don't know what that guy that you slept with was exposed to before he met you. Every time I got in trouble, no matter if it was minor or major, it's like, Rough Rider would egg that shit on and would make it worse. We eventually went back to the apartment. My best friend at the time, like her parents didn't even want her around me anymore because I got caught skipping school. Like whenever I would go to school, like we wouldn't even talk. So I definitely felt alone. Like I felt like I had nobody. Eventually we ended up moving out the apartment. Fast forward into the summer before I started high school. Uh, I was 14 um, and I still hated being at my mom's house. I still hated being there. You know, um, I didn't lost my best friend and I lost the guy that I was with, so I didn't have nobody. So um, I used to en enjoy taking trips to Lafayette, which is where my grandma had stayed at the time. She moved from, at this point, she had moved back to Louisiana from Arizona because she was in Arizona for a few years before this happened. And so I used to always go visit my grandma and my grandfather and my mom would um, send me down there on a Greyhound bus. Instead of her driving me down there uh, or whatever, um, she would just get me on the bus. And in order to ride the Greyhound by yourself, you have to at least be 14. And so I was, and I used to always take frequent trip, trips down there just to spend time with my grandma, just to be there. Like I wouldn't even be doing nothing. Like I would just, you know, be doing the same thing that I would do at home. Just, you know, watching TV, chilling, you know, spending time with my grandma. But it felt a lot better than being in Houston with Rough Rider with my mama. Like, it felt a lot better. So this particular summer, um, I used to talk to my grandma a lot about the different things that would go on in the household because I didn't have nobody else to talk to at that time. And so my grandma was the next closest person to me that I felt comfortable with, you know, talking about certain things with. And um, I used to tell her how it would make me feel. She always stayed neutral. Like she would, she would tell me, you know, that's, I understand you feel like that. And you know, I don't like the situation either, but that's your mama at the end of the day. And you know, she's grown and we, you know, we really can't, we can't do anything about it, but just pray about it. And that's what she always used to tell me, just pray about it. You know, just try to keep it together. Like you got this. And that right there was another reason why I survived in that situation for so long without, running away like there have been plenty of times that i've thought about running away my mama coming home catering to this woman buying her things she always will have the latest phones she's um you know them sidekicks were really really popular at one point and around the time the sidekicks were popular like she had every fucking sidekick i think they had the side the first sidekick the second sidekick the sidekick that push up um the sidekick that flip up like all type of sidekicks they had, you name it, Rough Rider hat. Whenever the iPhone started becoming popular, she was an iPhone freak. My mama would get, get her any iPhone she wanted. Every new iPhone that came out, she had it. And whenever Rough Rider is ready for a new phone, my mama would give me Rough Rider's old phone. I didn't really ask too much coming up, growing up as a child, um, but when I did, I used to always get the short end of the stick, if you kinda understand what I'm saying. It's like, my mama would cater to her needs before she catered to mine. And, um, that's another thing that I had a huge problem with. I decided that I was gonna write my mom a letter. And so I was a big emailer back then. I'm a good communicator whenever it comes to typing and stuff like that. I can express my feelings like that on paper or on the computer. So I typed my mom a long ass email and I really wish I had access to this email, but I don't anymore. But I typed her a long email and I just basically told her how I felt. Um, everything that I'm telling y'all, I basically told her in just, you know, probably a different way. Um, and then at the end of it all, I told her how I felt about her relationship with Rough Rider. I told her that I felt like they had something going on. I told her 
like the way you treat her it's kind of as if y'all are together like is it is that what it is are y'all an item are y'all in a relationship and it took a, a, a couple days to respond but whenever she did respond it was really really vague it wasn't really much of an explanation she didn't really tell me that she was gonna work on our relationship or wasn't she didn't tell me really anything uh, I don't really remember exactly her, what her response was, but what I do know for sure is that she denied the claims of her and Rough Rider being in a romantic relationship. Because not only did I think about it, like the entire family thought that, you know, that was going on. After my mama responded and really didn't give me the, the response that I was expecting, uh, like she didn't say, oh, we're going to work on this or are we going to be, I'm going to be better or I'm sorry. Like... I don't remember or recall her saying anything like that. So at this point, I felt like the email was useless. I felt like it was pointless. I'm gonna be honest with y'all. There's been times where I've wished that my mom was the one who passed away and not my dad. And that's, that sounds so horrible, but, and I don't like to use this word either, but it's just the, the honest to God truth. Over the course of these series, you're gonna find that I began to hate my mother more and more the more things she did to me the more things she didn't do um i grew hate for her i grew I, I resented her like i disliked her so much i ended up going back to houston um because school was getting ready to start and um my mom and rough rider actually was moved into a two-bedroom apartment it, it was a two-bedroom and so remember we just came from a three-bedroom right so why is there two bedrooms so Pretty much the explanation that I got from my mom was that Rough, and this is after the email and stuff like that. So my mom said Rough Rider was getting ready to graduate school because like I said, she was in college. Y'all, She didn't work. She put her through school, allowed her to live rent free, bill free. All My mom said that Rough Rider was getting ready to graduate and that um, all we needed was a two bedroom. So she was just going to get a two bedroom and, you know, um, Rough Rider was still living in the house with us at the time but she just said it was gonna be temporary. While I'm sleeping in my, my room, the second room is my mom's room, that Rough Rider would always sleep in. Now, mind you, Rough Rider put her bed in the living room. We had a huge ass bed, just, well, not a huge bed. It was like a um, full size bed, just sitting in the middle of our living room. That's where Rough Rider was supposed to sleep, but a fucking course, once again, excuses. So I began high school. I found myself meeting a lot of older guys I was like a relationship happy. I'd rather be in a relationship and that kind of carried on to me in my adult years as well. I felt like I just needed someone in my corner. Like, like I said, I didn't have nobody. And so, you know, I started meeting new people and you know, stuff like that. Like even people who didn't even go to my school. Like I just was like really, really social at this point in my life. And this is also the phase of my life where I started sneaking out the house. And whenever I say sneaking out the house, I mean like middle of the night, sneaking out the window and leaving, going somewhere and then coming back you know, and trying not to get caught. And eventually I got caught. Um, I actually got a story time about that, so I'll, I'll put that story time in the link in the description if you wanna go see what that was about. The winter of 2010 is when I met my daughter's father, Shorty. I met Shorty and he was older. He was, he was about nine years older than me um, at the time. I, I did lie to him about my age. Don't follow my footsteps. Lying about your age is not okay. It's actually really, really fucking dangerous. So I met him, he had his own place. Uh, I would tell him I'm I was at my best friend's house um, cause I had another best friend at the time in high school. I would tell her I was by her house when really I was with Shorty and I did that a lot. Like she she never found out about it honestly um, until I ended up getting pregnant, which is gonna be in my next episode because this is it. This is all I'm gonna talk about <laughs> in this one. And let me give y'all a sneak peek. My next story time is gonna be how the whole me getting pregnant came about. And I'll let y'all know how that came about in my next story time. If you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and subscribe because you don't wanna miss what's gonna be next. Y'all think y'all know all of the tea because I, I do be, you know, talk about a lot of stuff in my story times, but y'all think y'all know, but you don't. So in the meantime, go ahead and follow up with all of these other side videos all these side story times that i have um if you want to catch up if you haven't done so already don't forget to follow all of my social medias down below series sundays every sunday at 7 p.m central standard time i know my last story time posted at 5 but i'm gonna change it it's gonna now be at 7 
p.m. Central Standard Time. So don't forget to catch me every Sunday for Series Sunday. And then Wednesdays, we got our whatever Wednesdays. That's when I'm going to post whatever the fuck I want to. I'm going to start doing my happy hour segments again. And that's a happy hour with Angie. That's basically when I'm going to be drinking wine or drinking some type of alcohol. So give y'all advice on it. Because, you know, some of y'all tea be a little bit too hot. And I need to, I need that glass of wine to prepare for what I'm going to say. So if y'all need any advice, go ahead right now and email me at angeliquetalks at gmail.com. I'll post that down below as well. I'm gonna see y'all in my next video. Bye.